This segment brought to you by the Monster Marketing Group, 888-49-MONSTER or www.monstermg.com. Your one-stop shop for all of your logo, design, print, and marketing needs. If you can dream it, they can create it. And remember, they specialize in doing it quick. And remember, if you mention you heard about them and the three guys ran, you get 25% off your first order. Over $10,000. Design, shipping, and handling, not included. <laughs> this product just... is not meant to, be, to diagnose, treat, cure, and prevent any disease. If you have an erection lasting more than four hours, call another hunter. Don't go to the ER, loser. <laughs> Use it or lose it. Welcome, everybody. I'm Dawn Garcia of A Todd Magazine, and this is my brand new show, A Taste of Dawn, where we'll talk about everything related to savoring life. You can catch me on rantradionetwork.com every Tuesday and Thursday from noon to one where we're going to discuss food and wine, arts and entertainment, music, travel, leisure, and anything in between. This segment sponsored by Mucho Macho Michelada. Whenever you got to spice up your beer, Mucho Macho Michelada is for you. Did Only you, real men. Did you say Mucho Macho? Mucho Macho, baby, where the real men come to drink. Hey, I don't always drink michelada, but when I do, I drink mucho macho michelada. <laughs> if only Arvin could be a little more mucho macho. Will it put some hair on my chest? <laughs> no, but te quema entrando y saliendo. <laughs> Welcome to Sykes Accounting and Consulting Radio Show. I am your host, Anthony Sykes. Hi there, welcome back. At the break, I had a phone call from someone who wanted me to talk a little bit about myself and what what we do and our qualifications. Uh, I've been in this business for about 20 years. Uh, I've worked in all facets of accounting from, uh, I guess, auditing, uh, tax accounting, regular accounting. I worked for Fortune 500 companies. I've even worked for the Internal Revenue Service. What we currently do now, or what I currently do now, I uh, do seminars with EDD, the Employment Development Department um, of California. And we do payroll seminars for small businesses. Uh, and I think I have one coming up in February, about February 20th in Pomona. If you have a small business and you're curious about payroll taxes and how to do your payroll taxes, because that's a hot item for both IRS, EDD, and, um, well, those are the two biggest agencies, you might want to consider going to this. Even if you have someone else doing your payroll taxes for you or your payroll for you, you might want to know how to do it yourself. These are free seminars. Um, all you need to do is go to the EDD website and sign up, and it's worth it. It's it's a it's a good time. It's it's about six hours, so you do have to plan for the day, but I guarantee you you will learn. Uh, you will have a good understanding of uh, payroll taxes when you leave, especially how to file a form. Now, also, I do uh, workshops and seminars. Uh, at the request of the Internal Revenue Service. And by that I mean sometimes a group will call them and say, can you have someone come out and talk to us about taxes? And I do have one coming up. Again, that's in February uh, the 21st. Uh, you can call me at, uh, well, actually, you need to call me at my office for that one, and that's 562-864-2341. We are located in Santa Fe Springs. Uh, visit our website, and that's www.sykesaccounting.com. Sign up for our newsletter. We give tax tips. We have calculators for taxes for all types of different things. Sign up with us on Facebook. Uh, tweet with us. I do have tweets for taxes all around the world. Um, anyway, that's kind of a quick overview of me. And I'm hoping that uh, we can, uh, you know, we, we, we help you understand who we are and what we can do. Now, getting back a little bit 
another call that I had was on itemized deductions. And itemized deductions, that's your Schedule A. If you file, if you if you have a mortgage, uh, if you give to charity, you may be able to qualify for itemized deductions. One of the things that really trips a person up is the medical deduction. Uh, a person talked to me the other day, and he said, well, my accountant, he always files the tax returns, but he never get, takes into account uh, what I pay for medical. And I said, well, okay, let's see what we do. And he says, yeah, I do have medical. I said, all right. Well, did you know that there is a deduction for medical? There is a, 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 a certain amount that you have to overcome before it's deductible. He said, no. Well, for medical for this year, it's 7.5% of your adjusted gross income. What your adjusted gross in income is, sort of quickly, is what you've made less deductions uh, that you may have on page one of your return. So that would be something like if you you have alimony or if you have self-employment tax or if you've taken an IRA or if you're an educator, if you have taken or paid for some books or something for school for your classroom, those deduct from your income. What's left is called your adjusted gross income because your gross income would be uh, any wages that you have, any uh, net income if you had a business, any interest and in dividends, any rents or royalties, less any depreciation that you may have in that. So you take that number and you multiply it by 7.5%. And that, anything over that, would be the beginning to be deductible for your medical. So let's say you had $10,000 as adjusted gross income. So 7.5% of that is $750. So if you had medical expense of $600, it would not do you any good. But let's say you had a medical expense, your total medical expenses were $1,000. So now $250 would be over that $750, $750 amount so $250 could be a tax deduction. However, there is another uh, deduction, and that is your standard deduction. That's the deduction given if you have no itemized deductions. So all your itemized deductions would have to be over whatever your standard deduction is. Now, if you're single, that standard deduction could be I believe this year about seven thousand eight thousand dollars. So if it's not over eight thousand dollars, then none of it does you any good or you can you'd be better off taking the standard deduction. So I hope that kind of gives you a you know little bit of a an idea of what taxes are all about and how they can be. Now I have another one here, and that's if you have your own business, and if you're thinking, maybe I want to go in business, or maybe I just started my business this year, and I don't really know what I can deduct. Some of the things you can deduct, and some of these are, are very similar um, as what I talked about if you were in the, in the real, if you were a realtor, a real estate agent, but if you had business cards, you can deduct that. In any profession, you have to advertise. You have to have those business cards. Clerical. Now, if you hire someone to work for you, remember, that's payroll. You can't hire them as an independent contractor. You could hire a, a, a service like Apple One where they send someone. Now, you're not paying, you're paying Apple One or whatever that service would be, that temporary service. But if you hire Jane Doe, she is your employee. If she shows up there every day from whatever hours you set, working for whatever amount that you told her she was going to be earning per hour, then 
you do have to file payroll taxes. You are subject to those. You have to pay unemployment. You have to have workers' compensation. If you don't, something interesting will happen to you from both IRS and EDD. We'll talk about that maybe on another episode, but I want to move on on this. Now, computer supplies. Everybody has to have a computer, especially if you're in business, whether it's a laptop or a desktop or even now a tablet, you need to have something that you're going to be working from. So that would be deductible. Customer list. I, I, I send out emails to my clients and I email prospective clients. So that list that I buy is tax deductible. Um, gifts. We've talked about gifts. Again, your gifts are limited to $25. Office supplies. Oh, we think we have a caller here. Let's pick him up. Hello. Hi. Is this the tax show? Yes, it is. Um, I had a question. Hopefully yeah. you might have an answer. But um, I live in California, and I know that different counties, I don't know if all, all counties, but most counties have a different tax rate. Um, would you recommend driving um, to a different county to either buy, I don't know, something as small as a TV or maybe a vehicle? Obviously, you can't move a house, but would you recommend, you know, maybe taking a 20-minute drive headed down to, like, Orange County and making a larger purchase like a vehicle? Uh, unfortunately, uh, the, what is that? The authorities have thought of things like that, mm-hmm. I believe, they look at where you live and that's the sales tax that you pay so unless you have a friend in that lower tax county let's say Riverside uh-huh. um, it would work if you bought it at your friend's address given your friend's address okay. um, but it would not work using if you lived in LA uh, or LA County I should say mm. okay well, that answers my question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that brings us to a, a little bit about sales tax. Each county is different, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about that and kind of get back to the business deductions. But uh, if you have a business, I have a couple clients who are on the borderline, and they uh, the borderline of Orange County and LA County and they have clients coming from diff- each county to buy uh, buy from them so they have to find out where they live in order to make sure they charge them the right amount of sales tax now if you're a business professional and you're looking to start your business again um, let's say you have uh, uh, dues that you want to pay you you join the organization of whatever so those dues that you pay or even if you became a uh, Kiwanis or um, a Lions uh, member uh, they those dues may be tax deductible also you have to be sure uh, If your business called for some type of insurance, most do, whether it's liability or some type of errors and omissions insurance, uh, that would be deductible. And you just have to be sure that you need to insure yourself anything can happen. So we'll talk a little bit about the Sykes Accounting and Consulting Radio Show. We'll be right back. You watching the game at home? Why? Come watch it at Mambo Grill, the hottest spot in Downey. You'll have good food, drinks, and a great time at a low price. We have the coldest beer in our sports bar, where you can enjoy the game on any of our huge flat screen TVs. And when your home team wins, you get 25% off anything in Mambo Grill. We're on Downey Avenue, one block north of Firestone, or visit us on the web. Mambo Grill, love at first bite. Welcome, everybody. I'm Dawn Garcia of A Todd Magazine, and this is my brand new show, A Taste of Dawn, where we'll talk about everything related to savoring life. You can catch me on rantradionetwork.com every Tuesday and Thursday from noon to one. 
where we're going to discuss food and wine, arts and entertainment, music, travel, leisure, and anything in between. This segment sponsored by Mucho Macho Michelada. Whenever you got to spice up your beer, Mucho Macho Michelada is for you. Did Only you, real men. Did you say Mucho Macho? Mucho Macho, baby, where the real men come to drink. Hey, I don't always drink Michelada, but when I do, I drink Mucho Macho Michelada. <laughs> If only Arvid could be a little more mucho macho. Will it put some hair on my chest? <laughs> no, but te quema entrando y saliendo. Looking for a delicious, fresh family meal that's ready when you are and easy on your budget? Welcome to Piara Pizza. We make our pizzas with handmade dough, 100% real cheese, and tomato sauce blended with our own spices. Nothing is ever frozen. We always have large pepperoni and cheese pizzas fresh and waiting for you for only $5. Or choose one of our specialty pizzas. We have veggie, meat lovers, supreme, and Hawaiian. Add an order of our amazing hot wings, cheesy bread, or breadsticks. Our locations are ultra modern, ultra clean, and open seven days a week. Visit any one of our locations today. Or check us out on the web at www.piarapizza.com. Piara Pizza. Fresh, Hot and ready for you when you come in. Stop in for your Piara pizza today. Welcome to Sykes Accounting and Consulting Radio Show. I am your host, Anthony Sykes. Welcome back. Uh, we have someone here. This is Anthony Sykes. Hello. Hello. Yes. Anthony? Yeah, this is Brenda. Have Hi, a Brenda. question? Yes. Um, I wanted to know, um, I did my 2010 taxes, but I did not do my 2011. Is there going to be this year an extra penalty for me doing them that from 2011 and 2012? Uh, there won't be one for 2012 unless you actually owe money. Yeah, to, this okay. is 2012, so uh, if you file them before... April 15th, unless you get an extension, you'll be okay. But let's think about those 2011. Uh, yeah. You may or may not have a penalty for 2011, depending if you owe taxes. Um, I had to pay uh, for 2010, um, but I already paid it off. Okay, all right. So now I'm just dealing with the 2011 wanted to know if I had to pay an extra charge for not doing them. Oh, well, you might if you owe for 2011. There may be a penalty for failure to file and failure to pay. Okay. But okay. the best way is to, to, you know, come in and see. And we can tell you or actually go to your tax guy. Uh, if not, we'll be glad to tell you. Oh, where are you located at? In Santa Fe Springs. Oh, Santa Fe. Oh. Do we need to make an appointment with you then? Uh, yes. Call my office at 562-864-2341. And okay. Yeah, I, I'll be there and remind me and I'll talk with you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Okay, uh, back to where we were. I had a, another question and I wanted to get to in, in regards to payroll taxes for small businesses. And before that kind of left my mind here, I wanted to, to let you know in filing the federal form 940, because California is what's called a credit reduction state, um, the state of California did not pay back its loan that it received from the federal government for unemployment benefits. And because of that, uh, the government is taking it uh, from the small business owner, basically by reducing the credits that they receive for uh, filing their unemployment. Now the 940 is actually .006, and that, that's a credit because the total uh, 
unemployment rate at the federal level is 6%. They give you a discount of .006. And it's pretty complicated. You have to go through the form to see. But what I'm saying is that for this year, for 2012, the reduction rate is .006. So whatever that you owed or paid for the unemployment tax on your Form 940, which is on the federal form, is going to be effectively doubled. And uh, you will see that. So that's just a tip. Uh, there's no way around it. It's just sort of expect that. Because those forms are due, uh, they need to be filed. Yeah, actually, in a couple of days, the end of this month, is when all those uh, quarterly reports are need, need to be filed. So the 940, the 941 uh, on the federal, the DE, the D, the D, uh, DE9 and 9C for the state, uh, those all need to be filed uh, actually by the end of this month. So if you haven't done it, then beware. But also more important, or as as important as that, you need to make sure that all the W-2s if you have employees, are out by the end of this month. You also need to make sure that your 1099s are out. Uh, we in our office are kind of working overtime to get out the 1099s and the W-2s because our clients like to come in at the last moment and forget that these needs need to be out. So uh, those are those are some of the things that we as accountants have to do to help our clients keep going. Now, starting your own business. Again, um, where I left off was with your cell phone, but if you have an answering service, and I know most places don't really think about an answering service, but sometimes it makes sense. If you really need to have detailed uh, information, uh, you can have an answering service and they will get back to you. I have a client who has uh, a refrigeration repair business and they use an answering service because that service will ask you specifically what's wrong if you know. Uh, if not, at least give a general description of what's going wrong with your commercial refrigerator um, and, and then he knows what tools or what to expect when he gets there. Um, if you have equipment, now anything from uh, a briefcase to a calculator, even a camera. Um, if you're a realtor, you might need a camera to take pictures. Uh, your desk and chair, you're going to have furniture, and that gets to, gets to, or we can go a little bit into, is a office and home tax deductible? And it can be. IRS actually for 2013 has given um, a, a blanket $1,500 deduction. So if you don't keep good records for your office and home and you say, well, I can do that, that $1,500 would work. If not, then you need to keep very detailed records for your office and home, uh, such as how much is the insurance, the mortgage, and uh, the square footage of your your office and you have to keep the office furniture there you can't use a spare bedroom with a bed it has the bed has to be taken out um, you have to have file cabinets if you for storage of things and so on so your office truly has to look like and feel like an office that you might have in an office building um, then again, with your small business, we come back to uh, driving, mileage. Everyone, especially in California, especially in Los Angeles, uses their car to get around. So you need to keep a mileage log. You need to keep track of the expenses for your car, whether it's a repair, whether you're buying gas, but you need to write down that odometer and keep track of it every time you go out on business because those are some of the things that IRS looks for when you take these deductions. Now, let's say you, 
you you're like most of my clients and you kind of want to wing it uh is there an easy way to keep your uh, mileage log uh there really isn't an easy way but one way to kind of figure out what you've done is look at your repair bills keep all your repair bills because normally or if you had an oil change they will put your odometer uh amount on there so that kind of keeps track uh you normally will have your appointments whether if you have them on your your phone whether you put them on your computer so all you do is match up your appointments to where you're going to your repair bills and from the beginning of the year to the end of the year you will have roughly how much you had in in business miles so i don't say to do that all the time i just said that is a good rough estimate of how much in business miles that you may have now if you're buying things uh for your business you need to keep track of it um if you're a sole proprietor you're what's called a cash basis and that means you you get to you report only what you've actually received and if you build it out but you haven't received it you don't report it until you finally receive it if you are a business let's say a a corporation or an LLC uh there could be a, a an instance when you might become what's called an accrual basis taxpayer that is even right after you have invoiced that client then it's income even though you haven't received the money you still include it as income however when you uh pay your expenses you only get the credit for the expenses when you write that check and you send it out so that makes it a little tough now what you do get as an accrual basis taxpayer you have uh the right to write off bad debt so you have the abc company you've invoiced john doe for $500 now you've included that $500 as income but john doe did not pay and now a year later you get to write that off we have a caller on line Hello, this is Anthony Sykes. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? How you doing, Mr. Sykes? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Um I had a question for you. I don't I I'm not sure if you've addressed it yet or not, but um I work in a warehouse okay. and I got to buy like my own boots uh and pants all to give me a shirt. Just wondering if that would be a tax write-off. That's a tax write-off. That is an itemized deduction. um it it goes on your schedule A so it it may be there's still some some hurdles that you have to cross but i would keep track of all that um is there is there a minimum uh no there's no minimum so even if it's just $200 for my shoes that's still a tax write off that's a tax write off hmm. okay yeah. thank you i'll make i'll make sure to uh, keep track of the receipts then okay Thank All you. Right. Thank you. You're listening to the Sykes Accounting and Consulting Radio Show. We'll be right back. We are the three guys every Monday live from 6 to 7 p.m. You can call us at 855-69 the three guys. <laughs> It's not the three guys. This is why you should turn in because one has Tourette's. The you other really, one's illiterate. You really should listen and you never know what's going to happen. 855-69 three guys. G U Y S and the number 3, not the. Faces yeah. for radio, voices for the deaf. Look forward to talking to you. Hey, I'm Audio Candy. I don't know about what you guys. <laughs> Are 
you watching the game at home? Why? Come watch it at Mambo Grill, the hottest spot in Downey. You'll have good food, drinks, and a great time at a low price. We have the coldest beer in our sports bar, where you can enjoy the game on any of our huge flat screen TVs. And when your home team wins, you get 25% off anything in Mambo Grill. We're on Downey Avenue, one block north of Firestone, or visit us on the web. Mambo Grill, love at first bite. Welcome, everybody. I'm Dawn Garcia of A Todd Magazine, and this is my brand new show, A Taste of Dawn, where we'll talk about everything related to savoring life. You can catch me on rantradionetwork.com every Tuesday and Thursday from noon to one, where we're going to discuss food and wine, arts and entertainment, music, travel, leisure, and anything in between. Looking for a delicious, fresh family meal that's ready when you are and easy on your budget? Welcome to Piara Pizza. We make our pizzas with handmade dough, 100% real cheese, and tomato sauce blended with our own spices. Nothing is ever frozen. We always have large pepperoni and cheese pizzas fresh and waiting for you for only $5. Or choose one of our specialty pizzas. We have veggie, meat lovers, supreme, and Hawaiian. Add an order of our amazing hot wings, cheesy bread, or breadsticks. Our locations are ultra modern, ultra clean, and open seven days a week. Visit any one of our locations today. Or check us out on the web at www.piarapizza.com. Piara Pizza. Fresh, hot, and ready for you when you come in. Stop in for your Piara Pizza today. This segment brought to you by the Monster Marketing Group, 888-49-MONSTER or www.monstermg.com. Your one-stop shop for all of your logo, design, print, and marketing needs. You can dream it, they can create it. And remember, they specialize in doing it quick. And remember, if you mention you heard about them and the three guys ran, you get 25% off your first order. Over $10,000. Design, shipping, and handling, not included. <laughs> this product is not made to, to diagnose, treat, <laughs> cure, and prevent any disease. If you have an erection that's in more than four hours, call another hunter. Don't go to the ER, loser. <laughs> Use it or lose it. Welcome to Sykes Accounting and Consulting Radio Show. I am your host, Anthony Sykes. Hello and welcome back. How many of you out there buy mutual funds? Um, mutual funds are an easy way to buy a cross section of the stock market. Stock market is starting to run now, and now is a good time to get in. But if you do, you can get in for as little as twenty-five dollars a month, or actually as low as is ten dollars a month, depending with some online companies. Uh, I bring that up. I had a question at the break about uh, how do you buy and sell your mutual funds? Well, kind of talked about how you buy it. You, you can have it come out of your checking account um, monthly, weekly, however you want it to do. But when you sell it, there's something that's called reinvested dividends. And what the reinvested dividends are, um, the stocks that are the underlying value of those mutual funds. So it has X stocks, and those stocks uh, pay dividends. So those dividends buy more stocks. And because of that, you get more and more in that mutual fund. But when you sell that mutual fund, what happens? Well, those reinvested dividends increase what's called the basis. When you first bought that stock, for ten dollars that's what it cost you if it went up to twenty dollars and you sold it you'd have a ten dollar capital gain well the reinvested dividends let's say it was a dollar and it bought one dollar one yeah one dollar of stock so it goes up to eleven now your basis is eleven dollars and it goes up to twenty you now have nine dollars of capital gain and that's how mutual funds work kind of how stocks when you have reinvested dividends. Let's take a call. Hello. 
Hello. Well, guess I lost them. Uh, we'll try back. Uh, hopefully they call back here. Um, again, with, with uh, mutual funds and stocks, uh, that's something that the ordinary person can do to try to uh, increase their net worth. Uh, mutual funds grow over a, a, a long period of time. That's the difference. You won't, you can get rich. There, there are some companies that say buy, uh, buy it and, you know, by the time you turn 65, you have it. I'm not uh, uh, saying that, but I'm saying in a, in a pinch, that's a good backup. That's how you increase your wealth, how you have more money and your money works for you. And that's part of what we want to talk about on this program. We want to talk about not only how you can reduce your taxes. That's primary. We're in tax season right now. But we want to talk about how you can have something more at the end of the day that you can take a, a vacation on, that you can, um, you know, uh, be like Warren Buffett? No, that takes a whole lot of time. But you can have a better, make your life better, and you don't have to sacrifice as much as you think you might. So enough, for, enough said for that. Let's get back to taxes. One of the things I was talking about is if you had your own business and what are some of the things you would do I was looking at the medical profession. I have several uh, clients who, uh, I'm not really talking about doctors, I'm talking about those, uh, the medical assistants, the uh, maybe the nurses. There are things that they can deduct that they may or may not know. If you have a uniform, uh, the alterations or repairs on that uniform, that's a tax deduction. Dry cleaning on those uniforms, the uh, hat and cap that you wear, those are tax deductions when you buy them. Laundry of your scrubs and things, of the pants, the shoes that you buy, they're, they're kind of a specialized shoes, you can buy that. The alumni dues, um, those are a tax deduction. Your medical association dues, if you are a nurse, uh, professional dues also, referral service. Let's say you, you pay for a referral service to send you out on different jobs or short-term jobs and you have to pay a fee to get that, that's a tax deduction. And of course, union dues. If you happen to belong to a union, that is a tax deduction. If you take a correspondence course um, in order to keep your skills up, that's a tax deduction. Lab fees, so you're paying for your fees, your, your, your lab in order for you to work and make sure that you, you I guess, are drug free. Uh, photocopies, you know, you photocopy your, your resume, uh, all those are tax deductions. Registration fees, when you register with different uh, services, that's a tax deduction. The seminars that you go to as a, uh, a medical person, and you want to go to a seminar, make sure that you, you, you paid for it and everything. Uh, keep the receipts. That is a tax deduction. Uh, tuition transcripts. So if you're, you're, you have a transcript uh, and you're sending your transcripts from one school to another school while you're still working, that is a tax deduction. Uh, your medical bag that if you're, you're a doctor or a nurse and you keep you know, your, your, your medical bag or briefcase, um, those are tax deductions. Hello, this is Anthony Sykes. Hello, are you there? Hello? Yeah. Yes, I am. Yeah. Can you, hello. hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. What's your question? Okay, so I had a, yeah, I had a tax question for you. Okay. Um, basically, I, my business runs on strictly independent contractors. Okay. Like, that's why I, I guess I'm not really hiring them, but they they do work for me. Okay. Uh, my question was, how do I, you know, put that on my taxes? 
Okay. Uh, they're independent contractors, so you would issue them a 1099. And that 1099 is what you turn into IRS to show that you have a tax deduction. Okay. And they're asking me, is, I mean, is it true that they're not making more than a certain amount? They don't have to report their taxes? Is, is that true? No, that's not true. Now, what is true, if you have paid them less than $600, you do not have to issue them a 1099. You can, but you do not have to issue a 1099. But they, I, have, they have to report their taxes. If you paid them $10, they're supposed to report that $10. Oh, okay, okay. So they could, I mean, if I'm reporting them and they're not reporting it, it themselves they could get fined or something? Or? That's correct. Uh, now, what you need to have, you need to have their, their social security number um, mm -hmm. and you should have their address because on that 1099 you're sending a copy of that to IRS and that's what IRS is looking for to make sure that they file for their taxes. If you don't have that then you may have a problem when you file for your taxes and try to claim what you've paid for paid to them. I see. Yeah. So you don't want anything interesting happening to you. So you want to make sure you have that information and then when you turn it in, whether they file their taxes or not is not your problem. Right. So I mean if if um let's say, you know, I don't turn it in it's basically like I didn't spend that money, so they're going to tax me on it. That is correct. Okay. Yeah. I see. Okay. Well, that makes total sense. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Now, uh, that is a hot item for IRS and EDD, and that's the issue of independent contractors is such a hot item that IRS has a special program that allows you to if you had independent contractors and you feel that oh they should have been employees they will allow you to convert and that is uh, create W-2s for them and set them up as uh, employees without paying the penalties and that's a big that's a big item because uh, those penalties are run up very fast and especially at the state level also. So consider that if you have independent contractors, you need to make sure they're independent contractors. There is a, there, there's a, a number of uh, tests that both IRS and EDD do and I think that may be an upcoming show where I'll talk about the difference between an independent contractor and an employee because that's that's important that's a real hot topic in these times a lot of businesses think okay I really can't afford to pay those payroll taxes so I'll make this guy an independent contractor and they may be but if IRS or EDD comes walking through the door then you need to be prepared and you need to realize that one of the number one ways you get audited is that person who was an independent contractor, if you happen to lay them off or if they get hurt, they're going to go to EDD and file a claim. And that's how they find out that you have an independent contractor and maybe that person should have been an employee. I've seen it time and time again. I have uh, uh, clients who get into that that sort of situation and um, yeah, sometimes they come out okay, sometimes they don't. But I want you to be forewarned and you to be able to come out okay because what we want to do for you is help you keep more of what you make. Uh, again, uh, you can look at our website. It's www.sykesaccounting.com. Uh, give me a call, 562-864-2341. I will answer any of the questions that you have about the 2013 tax season. Thanks for listening. 
and I'll see you next time. You're listening to the Sykes Accounting and Consulting Radio Show. We'll be right back. This is Anthony Sykes, your host for Sykes Accounting and Consulting Radio Show, where we help small businesses grow and give you tax tips every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Catch us here on RantRadioNetwork.com. Thank you.